Hello, in this video I'll be talking about the slope-intercept form of a linear equation. Uh, we're going to start with a couple definitions here. Um, a family of functions is a group of functions with common characteristics. For instance, in this video I'm going to be talking about uh, linear functions, so they're all going to be uh, a family of linear functions. A parent function is the simplest function with these characteristics. So in this case, the linear parent function is just y equals x. And the graph of y equals x, I'll show you shortly, um, is just a line that goes straight through the origin and kind of splits uh, quadrants 1 and 4 and a half. Uh, I'm going to go a little further and say and call the parent function y equals 1x plus 0 uh, because the number in front of the variable here is a number that can change and change what the parent function looks like and the number that's being added or subtracted from the variable, the zero in this case, um, also changes what happens. And so we're going to go to a, a website and see what that looks like. So on my, uh, on my teacher page, um, if you go down below the picture here, um, there's a useful links button down there. And on this useful links button is something I just added, and it's an interactive slope intercept graphing activity. Um, and so it looks like this. And so what we have here is the parent function, which I called uh, y equals 1x plus 0, which is the same thing as saying y equals x. And as you can see, um, every x value is equal to every y value. So when x is 2, y is 2. When x is 3, y is 3. When x is 4, y is 4. y equals x. And when x is negative 4, y is negative 4. So this is the parent function for all linear functions. And so I told you that these numbers in front, like this is the coefficient of x. Um, it's on a slider here. So I can move this, and I can move this to the right a little bit, or I can move it to the left. And what's going to happen is it's going to change the way the, the line looks. Um, okay, so... Let's start by sliding the green one. So this is the uh, what's being added or subtracted to the x term. Notice like when I slide it over one or two spots uh, that it just looks the exact same. It's just a little higher. All right, so there it crosses the y-axis at 1. Here it crosses it at 2. Move it up. Now it's crossing at 4. Move it back down. It's crossing at negative 5. Um, and so as I change this number here to being added or being subtracted, it just moves the parent function line um, up and down. Now if I get that back to zero, there we go. Um, let me try to use this mouse instead. Now as I change this um, slider, notice what happens. So it still crosses the y-axis at zero it just changes the height of the line. It changes what's called the slope of the line. So here's a slope of 1, slope of 2. See how it's going up 2 and over 1, up 2 over 1. And now I can change it to 3. And now it's going up 3, 1, 2, 3, over 1, 1, 2, 3, over 1. And we can keep moving that. So I'll let you fool around with that on your own. You can just click the link from my website. But what I want you, wanted you to see here is that this number in front of the variable changes the slope of the line. And you can see it again as I move it. And this number being added or subtracted changes the height of the line. And we're going to call that the y-intercept. So notice, whatever the number is, the y-intercept is the same. So it crosses at 0. When it's 3, it crosses at 3. Um, so you can fool around with that. We're going to go back to, um, back to work here. Uh, so identifying slope and y-intercept. Well, we already said that the number uh, that's in front over here is the slope. And so m equals the slope. Why it's called m, I'm not entirely sure. I checked a couple websites, and people aren't really in agreement. Um, there's a couple different theories. You can check that out if you want, but it's m. 
for better or for worse. Um, the B is the y-intercept. Okay, Not to be confused with the y-coordinate. The y-intercept is where the line crosses the y-axis. Okay, um, And so in this case, we're, when we're identifying the slope and y-intercept of, of an equation that's in slope-intercept form, well, the slope is 3 and the y-intercept is negative 4. If this was plus, then it would just be 4. So when an equation's in slope-intercept form, it's very easy to figure out what the slope and intercept are. Writing an equation in slope-intercept form. So we want our equation to look like y equals mx plus b. And if we're given the information here, what is the equation of a line with slope negative 4 fifths and y-intercept of 7? Well, the y stays the same. The slope, we're going to plug that in for m, so negative 4 fifths. The x stays as x. And the y-intercept of 7 is just the b there. So y equals negative 4x plus 7. Did I say negative 4x? y equals negative 4 fifths x plus 7. All right, so now writing an equation from a graph. So here we have this graph. And now we need to figure out what the equation is. Well, in the, on the website where we are flowing around there, uh, we know the B number. Um, one website that I checked out, um, the B is the y-intercept, but it's also we can use as the beginning of the graph, which I'll show you in a moment. But uh, where, the, where the line crosses the y-axis in this case is negative 2. And so we know that B is going to be negative 2. The slope... Um, I need to find another line, another point on this line here. Here we go, right here. So if we go up one, two, three, four, five, and then over to the right three, so the slope is five thirds. That's a five. Let's make that look a little cleaner there. So we have five thirds x minus two. So y equals five thirds x minus two. So the important parts were the where the y-intercept right here, and then the up 5 over 3 for the slope. So if we needed to write an equation from two points, what equation in slope-intercept form represents the line that passes through the points 3, 5, and 4, negative 2? Well, we could graph it if we wanted, um, but oftentimes that, that's going to be time-consuming. If you remember back from a previous video, we had a formula for slope. Y, or sorry, m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And so if we call this point 1 and this point 2, we would just plug in the values. So negative 2 minus 5 over 4 minus 3. So we get negative 7 over 1. So in this case, the slope is just negative 7. Um, we don't know the y-intercept yet. So what we can do is we can just plug in these values into y and x. So uh, we could use either one of these points. I'll just choose the 3 and the 5. So in this case, the 3 is the x and the 5 is the y. So just plug it into that formula, y equals mx plus b. So y is 5 equals negative 7, because that's what m is, times x, which is 3, plus b, which we're trying to find out. So we know that 5 equals negative 21 plus something. Um, so we can add 21 to both sides here, and we're going to end up with uh, 26 equals b. So now we know the important parts, which are m and b, and now we can write our equation. y equals negative 7x plus 26. There we go. All right, last example here. Let's say we wanted to graph this linear equation. So we've been graphing equations. We know how to do it. We could just make a t-chart, x, y, come up with some x values, 0, 2, 1, 2. Uh, 6, and so on, negative 1, comma, negative 2. But the cool part about slope-intercept form is that these two pieces of information, the, the b of 2 and the m of 4, is all we need to graph it. So 
B, the y-intercept, we call the beginning of the graphing situation, uh, is a 2. So we just make a dot, let me change colors here, a dot at 2. And then we slope 4. That means uh, sloping is always a fraction, so we just want to make that a fraction. We can make it 4 over 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1. There we go. So now we can just make our graph from that. So that's how fast we can graph using slope-intercept form. We don't have to make a t-chart. We just use the slope and the intercept. Just to show you, when, when you have a slope of 4, a positive slope, uh, 4 over 1, that equals positive 4. Negative 4 divided by negative 1 would also equal positive 4. And so just to show you that that would work as well, we could go down 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and left 1, and that still fits the line. So you don't have to go up and right, you could go down and left. So up is positive, down is negative, and then right is positive, and left is negative. Thanks for watching.